Hi, I'm Michael Jacobson, and welcome to the latest episode of The Business of Creativity, the show where we interview world leaders of the creative sector. Today, we're fortunate to sit down with theatre and entertainment impresario, Sally Green. Sally is the owner of the iconic Old Vic Theatre, Ronnie Scott's, one of the most famous jazz clubs in the world. She's a global co-owner and co-producer of Billy Elliot, which has been one of the most successful stage musicals of all time. She owns a film company. She owns a restaurant in Chelsea, which is a favorite eating place of Mick Jagger. She is a wonderful example of an entrepreneur who has mixed artistic and economic success. Let's go and see what Sally Green has to say about the business of creativity. Sally Green, Hi. welcome to the business of creativity. Pleasure. Sally, you own some of London's, in fact, the world's most iconic entertainment venues, the Old Vic Theatre, formerly having Kevin Spacey as artistic director, Cheney Walk Brasserie, famous restaurant in Chelsea, Criterion Theatre, Ronnie Scott's, founded in 1959, Last performance place of Lenny Kravitz, one of the most famous jazz clubs in the world. How did this come about? How did it come about? It comes about because I've got a passion. And my passion is creativity. And my passion is being looking at opportunities and just going for them. Somebody would say to me, I remember this is remember this is twelve years ago when we bought the old Vic Theatre. And I remember someone saying, The old Vic's up for sale. I said, Any men up for it? She said, Yeah, a lot. I said, quick, let's go for it. And Stephen Jordan and I came down here, looked at it, thought, what a fabulous looking building. It was its paper bags hanging around, but it was amazing. And of course you feel all those people of the olden days in here, like Laurence mm. Olivier and, I mean, as you say, it's one of the most, it's the most famous theater in London. Yeah. Um, so I said to Stephen, what do you think? Say, yeah, darling, let's do it. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I said, how much do we want? They want four million or something. So um, we started talking to the Canadian owners. And after about two years, it was ours, with a bit of a mortgage on it. Mm -hmm. And then I saw Kevin Spacey. And I thought to myself, wow, he's amazing. Let's get him. And Elton John and all those sort of things. So we literally. He was a board member, of course. And yes. he was the chairman at the time. Mm -hmm. And you just put them all on and you go, right, talk, mm. eat, do what you have to do. And then they start to come up with these ideas and you start to say, that one's a good one. This is a good one. So Kevin Spacey was the first artistic director here. And he was like, a, he was a kind of an icon, stardust, mm -hmm. as you know, yeah. and brought this massive stardust to the old Vic, which actually had had a really hard time for a long time. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it was stars and stripes and America and United States and London mixed together. So it was extraordinary. So very entrepreneurially, you saw the you saw the opportunity. And went, went for bang, it. Went for it, put the right team together and I didn't here sleep we are. very well. No. <laughs> Two chairman later. <laughs> but it's now a charitable trust and we run this as a charitable trust. Um, and it's, um, you and know. you have a new artistic uh, uh, director. We have a new days. artistic director, Matthew Watchers, who's much quieter and at the moment in New York doing a big musical mm -hmm. and he is Kevin's much more of a big star but Matthew did Matilda he's doing Groundhog Day on Broadway amazing director but quite like this mm -hmm. and he's changed the whole place in the way that it's very easy to get here so all the kids come here all the time you know it's much mm -hmm. more very it's for kids more yes. accessible and we have all these discussions like tonight we've got a discussion about art and what it means and what this play means and all these fabulous people are coming to listen to it because he is much more into young people. Yes. And he's been amazing, you know. So Kevin was much more the stardust. So it's moving into a different phase of his life now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite amazing because it's actually, you know, it's doing big musicals, but it's also doing, I mean, Tom Stoppard's here at the moment. So, wow. you know. All those sort of people. There you go. Well, yeah. while we're on the subject of, of famous movies and famous plays, one of the most famous movies of all time, Billy Elliot, released in 2000, premiered on the West End in 2005, music by Elton John, one of the most successful musicals, the longest running musicals ever on the West End. Why do I say this? Well, you own half of it. Okay. What's the story behind okay, this? Okay, the story of that one is, I go down to Cannes, to the film festival, and I see a film called Billy Elliot. And Elton John's sitting in front of me, and David Furnish is somewhere there. Stephen Daudry's there with the boy, the star of it. Uh -huh. And we're all looking at this, and I think, 
I think Elton is crying. I think this is a musical. Eric Fellner's there, you know, working title. Yes. And he's kind of going, mm, you know, what, 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 and we kind of bit by bit just put this on as a musical. And it is the long, and it started here at the Old Vic, in front wow. of the iron. And we all stood on the front of the iron and went, sure, this is good. I remember Eric coming into this office and going, what do you think? I said, this is good, this is brilliant. Peter Darling did the choreography. Um, it was a team of people that you knew were fantastic. Mm. When you get a team of people who are just the right team, you know it's it's good. Because you've got Stephen George, you've got Eric Fellner, you know, who made the film. You've got Peter Darling, who did the choreography. You've got the right set designer. You've just got that right mix. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was a, it's the time. Yes. Labour isn't working. Yes. It's back. So it's topical. <laughs> It's so interesting. I've read actually interviews with Elton where he's told that story, his story, where yeah. he was sitting in Cannes. It's yeah. interesting to hear it because you were there at yeah. that time as well. And I was right behind him. What does it mean to be co owner of Billy Elliot, which is, is, is pumping out people and audiences all around the world at any one time? What does it mean now? You put together the team, it's, you know, 12 Well, years it's later. one of those things that just goes on and on. You know, it's on tour, it's in Manchester at the moment, it just goes on and on. And when people see you, they go, Billy Elliot. You know, I bought a house in, in Notting Hill, it's called the Billy House. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's another entrepreneurial thing. Wow. And we you built it. Named well, you know, we both built street. it together. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Yes. So just in case anyone should think that you're not busy enough, you also own a film company, Greenlight Pictures, which has Greenlight had films. Films, Greenlight Films, which has had films which have been nominated for Rain Dance and Miami Film Festival. What role are you playing? Are you on the business side? The, apart from being the owner, are you on the business side, the creative side? I'm both. But I like to look at both of things. I like to see what we're doing. And we've got the development officer now who used to work for Eric Fellner, in mm -hmm. fact. And she is, she, she, I'm meeting her later on, but she is like this, I think this and I think that. You know, I ask all the right people, as Owen mm -hmm. and Deborah Haywood, mm -hmm. and everyone, what's the right thing to do? And as you know, it's TV now. Mm -hmm. Film is kind of a little bit to the side. So yes. we're, we're, we're bigging it up. And we brought in someone specially just to raise money for it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's interesting. So she'll she'll find the project. We found one projects. project in particular that yes. everybody seems to want. Well, if you're a property developer and you're building a building, it's pretty straightforward. You get the get the architectural diagrams, you get get the builds in, and up it goes. But with with something like a film or a TV, it's intangible. It's intangible. You, you can't see how it's going to no. be. So is, is your philosophy? I always get investors. Right people. Yes. We always get investors. We like investors. Yeah, we like investors. Yeah. We actually had um, a very lovely Russian investor for the last film. Mm -hmm. But this one is a little bit different because this is a TV series and it's about two very famous people when they were young. Mm -hmm. And I think Amazon, Netflix right. are kind of looking at it. Yes. So I'll tell you if you ask me in a few questions. But I like to see what, I, I just like the idea of film because I think film is, you can tell a story. Mm. On stage, yes, you can tell a story, but a film or TV, you can tell a story that you can go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you, can, you can tell something that's, other people can get involved in and that's why I like the idea of Greenlight Film. Anyway, it's getting bigger and it's on our website now, which you'll see soon. Mm. It's a completely new website and it's, um, yeah. And how are you getting the, without disclosing, you know, private details with investors, just because obviously a lot of people in the creative sector getting investment is something they really struggle with because often the investment community, you know, is perceiving the creative sector as risky. If you're coming with a with a film, obviously you, you have a huge track record anyway. But if, if one is coming with with a film, they've got a script. What what would you say? What what kind of thing would you say to an investor when you're picking up the phone and saying, "Hey, I've got this script. I think it would make a good movie." I'd say what just... I'd probably say, so the, like Desert Dance. The guy came and talked to me about it. The young director, and he said, "I've got a great story. It's about a man who learned to dance on YouTube." On a YouTube, okay and blah, 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 blah. And he was very young and he was kind of not sure who to use. And I would say, I said to him, look, I've got the right person for you to do the, choreog the choreography for you. And then he said, and then it was Peter Darling who'd done Billy Elliot. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, no, 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 actually it should be someone like Akram Khan who's running the English National Ballet with Tamara Rojo mm -hmm. because he is so creative in a kind of different way. Mm -hmm. So we would kind of share this and he would go off and do it, then bring it back to me. And I would say, what kind of money are you looking for? And then the investor might come and sit in the room with me. And I would say, he said, do you like this, Sally? I said, yeah, I really like it. I think you've got to tweak this and tweak that, but I really like it. 
So I think they put their trust in me yes. on that side of it. Mm -hmm. And the project is normally because somebody beguiles me with it. And right. then it goes on and they go, this is a really good story. And I think another, and now I think it's all about television. So green light film, we green light film TV. Green light film on TV. Yeah. Excellent. And you'll see it on the new website coming up. Good. Look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Slight change of tone now. Um, green light uh, uh, film. We've talked about Billy Elliot. We've talked about your theatre assets. You also own Cheney Walk Brasserie, one of the most iconic, famous restaurants in London. Cheney Walk, home to Mick Jagger and a host of other stars and celebrities in in Chelsea. How does this fit into your portfolio? Um, we got that about 12 years ago and it was really a kind of a French restaurant that grew and grew and grew. We have now got permission to extend it. So it is an iconic restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got this big, have you been there? I have been there. Yeah. And you're hosting loads of, lots of events there. Yeah. And you know, we did our big events there actually when I was trying to raise money with Bob Diamond because mm -hmm. you look out onto the river and everyone goes, wow. Mm. You also had all sorts of things there. I mean, just extraordinary things there. You know, it's, 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 we've now got permission to expand it. And we might, might put a little shop beside it, sell bread. Okay. Because actually, it's got that kind of, you know, buzz about it. Mm. It's got a beautiful location. It's and it's a, a beautiful location. Brand. And now we've got permission to extend it. So this is great, you know. And yeah, you're right. It's Mick Jagger on the road, my next door neighbor. And it's just one of those places that is absolutely fabulous. Yeah, and, and still it's got, got the a little open... bit of that showbiz touch. It has, definitely. Yes. It definitely has. But we are expanding it and probably bringing somebody else into the picture. Well, I won't tell you about it now, but someone who's got a name as a chef. Mm -hmm. Because it needs every, I think, a restaurant need, and you can die by running restaurants, as you know. But it's, a, it's you know, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's hard work. It's hard work. But it is a beautiful restaurant. It sure is. And so you've been named one of the most persuasive women in British theatre. You're on the Evening Standard's most influential people uh, list. What is it that drives you? Because these are, these are fancy titles, these are recognitions of how other people are seeing you, but you are an entrepreneur at heart. And what is it that's, that's driving you every day? To be honest, I see an opportunity. I see a person for the opportunity and I go for it. And I think an entrepreneur is someone who really sees something and then sees the right person to put beside it. And when I saw, let's say, Ronnie Scott's, it was dark. Mm. This place was dark. And yeah, I think... Yeah, they into disrepair. Yeah, yeah. And I, I walked past Ronnie Scott's and I went, this doesn't... It's, it's dark. It's, it's, it needs all the light that it had in, mm. when was it, 1959? Yes. And, you know, you just need to get someone brilliant to design it for you reopen it, have someone fantastic running it for you. Because remember, this is, I'm not a jazz entrepreneur. Mm. I am an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur that sees a, yeah, I was like, oh my God, this is quite extraordinary and it's amazing. And I think we've now made it a huge success yeah. with all the right people. Yes. Um, and particularly our managing director. It's an extraordinary quality of entrepreneurs. That it's very easy to turn around now, look at it and say, wow, so successful, sadly so lucky. But the reality is, it was dilapidated and you as an entrepreneur had the ability to see something that clearly no one else at that time could see and not just that but not just jazz you've got to music in there mm -hmm. you know you've got to have someone you've got to have so you've prince got a, you've had a vision and thought this I had is a vision. vision this is not about jazz this is about music and mm -hmm. i know it's an iconic jazz club and you can go to heathrow airport and say take me to ronnie scott's and i'll take you to the right place yes. and yes. i think it's an iconic venue and yes, i think sure you know, I looked at it and I went to Paris and I saw a, a hotel and I thought that guy who's done up that hotel should do up Ronnie Scott's because it's got that atmosphere. Mm. And then it's not just about the jazz, it's about the music and who goes there. And it's, you know, we have young people of like, you know, who went there? Mm. You'll say, oh, I went there with my father 50 years mm. ago. Mm. Well, not 50 years ago, yeah. but you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. And people say that to me. I say, yeah, but now your son's coming and running it. Yes. It's, yes. it's, it's making a fortune. It's a great story, yeah. yeah. And it's making a fortune. It's something that clearly you're still excited about the, the nuts and bolts of the operation, which brings me to the next thing I wanted to ask you, and that yeah. is how do you, as an extremely successful creative sector entrepreneur with, with businesses across the whole uh, you know, suite of, 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 por of the portfolio of the creative sector, how do you mix art and commerce? Because this is something that most 
creative sector entrepreneurs, I think, um, struggle with, or many many do anyway. And there's there's actually not a lot of people globally that you can point to, like yourself or like a Simon Cowell or like a Jed Doherty. And you know there are there are a number of them, but but there's not enough people who've been able to mix art and commerce successfully and 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 be able to do what they love. First of all, you need a very bills. good um, financial director. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's Keep important. Those creative things in line. Yeah, you know, you, you know, how's this doing? How's that doing? And we've had really great ones, you know, one here, and now we've got somebody else here. But I mean, really, really good financial directors who tell you the picture. And in fact, the um, the guy who runs Ronnie Scott's, he literally tells me this, 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 this. Look at this and look at that. And it's quite interesting to see it because. There are some things that do well. I mean, I could point to these shows on here and which ones did well and which didn't do well. Mm -hmm. he, they all do that to me. This didn't do well, that did well, think about this. Then when I saw this opportunity recently, I was at um, a club, Mark's Club, for Woman of the Year. Mm -hmm. I looked right behind me and I saw this guy, the one we're talking about, mm -hmm. and I went, right, he's the right one to help me okay. with this. Mm -hmm because he knows about small clubs mm. and this would really, and it's not to do with Ronnie Scott's, but it's a little club that actually would really help Soho get back together again. Mm -hmm. Because you know, people are trying to gentrify Soho and it has yes. to be back as it was. So I looked behind him so I called him up and I yeah. said, could you do me a favor, could you meet me at Ronnie Scott's in 10 minutes? He said, well actually I'm all over the world. And I went, okay, well, 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> He said, oh, I can't come back to the 2nd of March. So I said, no, that's too late. You've got to come now. So he came to see me and he said, I said, what do you need to make this work? Business plan, I want this, this, this and this, but actually it's really a good idea. Mm. And it's fitting people with fitting and seeing opportunities. Mm. It's a jigsaw puzzle that you're putting together. It's almost a jigsaw yeah. puzzle. And then someone would call me and an entrepreneur is someone I think sees an opportunity and goes for it and then gets the right people with it. Yes. You know, you see an open door, you see a, you see something, you know, like a restaurant. Mm -hmm. you, we used to have a restaurant over the road, do you remember? I do remember. It was yeah. the wrong place. Mm -hmm. mm. But now it would be brilliant. Mm. Now it would be brilliant if there was a restaurant there because, of course, the whole place has opened up. Yes. You know, it was paper bags in the air and, mm. but yeah. Interesting, you know, obviously like, like me and like all of us, I'm sure not everything that you've done, you've just talked about this restaurant, has been a success, but the things that you that you have done well have kicked the ball out of the park and i think to me you know this is an important message to get across to the investment community as well in yeah. the creative sector you can have you can have financial as well as creative yeah. success because as you know i've got an australian partner in um ronnie scott's mm -hmm. and um i would say he was an entrepreneur when he was a bit younger mm -hmm. now i don't think he wants to take chances so much mm -hmm. because i see an opportunity and i would say right let's go for that mm. Um, but he'd probably say, no, I'm in Tasmania or whatever. I want to be there and, you know, it's not for me. Yeah. So I would find someone to do it for me. Mm -hmm. um, On a lighter note, can I ask you about the number plates, your famous number plates? It's so funny because whenever I see, people come up to me and say, to be or not to be, Tom Stoppard said to me, are they your num number plates, Al? And I went, yeah, you're going to have to be. <laughs> so you've got to be or not to, to be. be, the famous, the yeah. famous lines. The Range Rover is yes. outside to be yeah. and, of course, Someone said to me the other day, if you're going to have number plates, they are the ones to have. Yes. When people come up to me and say, whose are those number plates? I normally say, I think they're Kevin Spacey's. It's a joke. <laughs> uh, Tom Stoppard said to me the other day, darling, are you to be? And I said, mm, sometimes, but sometimes not to be. That but you can have on it. The mood of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and on a final note, you've been inspirational in what you've had to say. Any, any final advice for creative sector entrepreneurs in the UK? creative sector is an 86 billion pound a year sector. I don't think it gets anywhere near the, the love and care and attention that it probably should from, from the people that it needs because it's, it's, it's powering away, it's already successful. But, and in the US of course, huge business, South Korea, many countries around the world, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the number one industry. But yet creative sector entrepreneurs, whether they be- Well, we're taking Billy Elliot to South Korea mm -hmm. and Japan. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. The creative sector people sitting at home thinking, you know, how can I, how can I grow this business? Whatever it be, an art and craft business, uh, whether they be a, a freelance photographer or videographer or whatever the role they might play in the creative sector, there are people who might be struggling to. Someone to get the has support. an idea. Think of J.K. Rowling. 
someone had an idea, she had an idea, she went for it. She's probably sitting in the back of a, I don't know, whatever, you, she went for it. I think you just got to, your idea comes to you, talk to the right person about it. I mean, mm. I get people no, calling me critical. all the time. Mm. Talk to the right person of who's in that world. Mm -hmm. Because remember, a lot of it is digital now. So mm. you're talking about, if you're in that world, you've got to talk about that. I mean, a lot of it is digital. And you've got to be creative and come and talk to the right person about it. Mm. You know, a lot of people come and talk to me about, theatre, a lot of people come and talk to me about music, but you've got to find the right person to talk to. I don't mind people calling me up. Mm -hmm. I have no, you know, somebody called me up the other day and said to me, oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I said, well, come and sit with me and talk to me about it for mm -hmm. five minutes. Mm -hmm. It might be an assistant who does it, but I just think you've got yeah. to talk to someone about it and what you're doing. Yes. And if your idea is brilliant, there was someone the other day at, the old, at uh, Ronnie Scott's and he's he looked about 12 mm. and he was doing this music mm -hmm. and I thought yeah it's good but it's not good enough and then mm. as he got into it he is amazing mm. I mean really amazing but having come just from New Orleans can you imagine how you, many people have picked me up you had a high benchmark yes high benchmark everyone was calling me I just said okay and New Orleans is whoa you know it's the city yeah and I sat in these clubs and I'm going and they're going oh we hear you own a jazz club and they went yeah quick yeah. but it's a lot, um, a lot of business there yeah a lot of business there yeah and australia of course is where we took billy elliot mm -hmm. and yeah. that was a great success yes and there's something about australia that is quite amazing mm. of course there and is. of course billy was in our theater my theater in australia yeah of so course we had this yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. quite extraordinary yes and um so in summary you they should go with their inspiration go with their gut feel try and identify the right person yeah Make Honestly, that call. you never know what. what no, and all, it's all different do. people. I mean, I get so many people. I'll, I'll get a little sax guy who's invented a little tiny sax calling me. So I invented this little tiny sax, and what do you think? And I went, Yeah, let's have a look at it. Let's see how it sounds. Mm. Or you get someone saying, um, I met Julie Tamor the other day. I've mm. never met her before. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, oh, It's all about big spaces now, Sally. And it's about galleries, and it's about maybe you could put theatre in galleries. And do you know Alex Poots? Yes extraordinary guy mm -hmm. I mean he's an extraordinary guy and he had a gut feeling mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. and I went to his venue something he did literally in London recently and I went wow mm. because huge galleries theatre you know art it's all in different places and you know someone called me the other day and said oh, I own the House of Worth mm -hmm. and I want to put theatre and I want to put music on there and I want to do this and I want to do that and I said well let's talk about it you know, you can, you can. You're always open to opportunities. I'm always open to opportunities. As soon as I see something that's actually quite a good idea and everyone's going temper, temper, <laughs> temper, you know, let's temper this. And I go, no, let's do it. Yeah. And I think that anybody who's young and is obviously someone who's an entrepreneur knows an opportunity. My son's an entrepreneur. He is. He's, he's got his own successful business, hasn't he? Yeah, he's unbelievable. Mm. He's just one of He's those people, bowl, he bowling, knows. Bowling alleys, yes. Yeah, and he knows, and you know, he's, listen, there's been a big interruption, but he knows how to do it. Yeah. You know, he's, he's one of those people, and he's... And he's, he, he's had the benefit of having other entrepreneurs yeah, around him from yeah. a young age and, and getting the sense yeah, of it, Yeah, right? he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Sally Green, thanks for being on the business. It's my absolute pleasure.